Okay, good day. So today we're going to continue the discussion of our first lesson, which is um, the nature of inquiry and research. So in our past meeting, we have talked about the definition of research, the definition of inquiry, investigation, and immersion. So those three I's, inquiry, investigation, and immersion, are really essential when we are conducting research. Also, last week we have um, discussed or we have uh, enumerated or enlisted the main purposes why people or why researchers are conducting research. And also we have discussed and we have enlisted some of the importance of research in our daily lives. So for today, we will continue the discussion with the characteristics of research. So these are the characteristics of research. First, okay, so the first one is research is empirical. So when we say empirical, research must be based on direct experience or observation. So meaning, if you will be conducting research and you will be gathering information or data coming from your respondents, they must, um, your respondents must directly experience the situation that you are studying or you as a researcher must be directly observing the phenomenon or the situation. Second, research is logical. So the information or the research process must be based on valid procedures and principles. So meaning you will be following steps or every steps that a researcher must follow when he or she is conducting research. You must apply uh, the principles in conducting research or the different principles when a person is conducting a research. Third, research is uh, cyclical or cyclical, meaning it starts with a problem. You as a researcher will start with a certain problem that you want to, to resolve or you want to somehow um, give a solution and then you will follow the procedures that you need to follow, like for example, they, uh, after having a problem, you will now collect relevant data or information about it, and then you will analyze those data, and then based on the analysis that you've done, what what would be uh, the result of your research, what could be your um, recommended solutions to the problem that you are resolving, and then after it, there will be a problem that will arise, okay? So that problem will be resolved by the future researchers, okay? So you start with a problem and then you will end with another problem. So that's cyclical. Research is analytical, so meaning as you gather data or as you complete the data gathering procedure, you will now analyze it based on some procedures and you will analyze it based on some th uh, tools that will help you to come up with an, a result, okay? So you will be using statistical tools or um, statistical analysis or even thematic approach in analyzing your data okay so you will really apply analytical procedures when you are conducting research um, if research is replicable so meaning it could be replicated or in some cases you could repeat some research that were published years ago so this enable the researcher to arrive at valid and conclusive results so don't be afraid if you found um, a certain research that has the same topic with your research because as stated in this characteristics of research, it could be replicated or a research could be repeated. Okay, so may it may be repeated, like for example, you've found a certain research that uh, 
that was conducted in a certain place and you somehow want to find out if that research is applicable on your uh, on your place so you could somehow replicate that research you could apply the principles or the procedures used on that research that is applied on a certain place and try to somehow conduct it on your place and see what would be the result of it okay and then lastly research is critical so it must exhibit careful and precise judgment we don't conclude we don't come up with a certain result that easily okay so we somehow need we need to follow proper procedures before coming up with a result before coming up with a recommendation before coming up with a certain solution so we must be careful in data gathering procedures we must be careful when when we are analyzing our data okay so those are the characteristics of research so next will be the step or the seven steps of the research process so this will be somehow the summary of the whole research subject okay first will be defining and developing your topic so in here you will be observing your surroundings gather some or look for some situations analyze some situations or problems that surround you okay and then if you you have chosen your topic you will now gather um, related studies and article about uh, about it so that we could have a strong foundation for our research next is find background information about your chosen topic so um in here just like what I have said a while ago, after having your problem or after having your topic or the topic of your research, you could now look for some relevant and related studies and articles. You may look for some essays published on journals. You could look for thesis or dissertations that were uh, written by some experts or researchers around the world and make it as your foundation, make it as the background of your topic so that your research will be uh, strong enough okay you could have enough data to support your claims when you will be writing your research third plan your research design including your sample so in here you will be choosing a specific type of research that will be applicable on your topic okay and also you will identify here uh, the sampling technique or the sampling method that you will use in order to determine your um, respondents. Okay, so there will be a specific sampling method to be used in identifying your respondents. Like, for example, uh, will you be using uh, the random sampling method, the fishbowl method, and so on and so forth in identifying your respondents? Fourth, you will now gather necessary data. So since you have identified your respondents or who will be your respondents, since you have established the foundation of your topic or your research, since you already have your research design, so now you may now conduct the data gathering procedure. So you could gather data again based on observation, based on interview, based on surveys and so on and so forth so like for example if you will be conducting interviews you may use open-ended questions okay so that your respondents will provide their insights or point of views about your topic uh, and then if you will be having survey or you will be using uh, a test tool okay so you could have a closed-ended question or a, pe a, a pen and pencil, a paper and pencil test. So like, for example, you will be having post-test and pre-test. Okay. So, and then fifth, uh, you will now be processing and analyzing the data that you have gathered using the different tools or um, specialized tools or uh analysis or analyzation process like for example for 
quantitative research, you may use thematic analysis. For for qualitative research, you may use thematic analysis. And for quantitative research, you may use statistical tools. Okay, so these tools will help you to understand the data that you have gathered. Fifth is formulate new insights gained or the conclusions and the recommendations of your research. So basically, based on the data that you have gathered, what have you found out? Okay, what uh, what are the results of your research? Um, what uh, what have you have what have you concluded after analyzing the data that you have gathered? So, for example, is there a significant uh, or is there a significant relationship between your topic or between your uh, topic and then your the performance of your respondent. So based on the data that you have gathered, what could be the result of your research? So that's first step six. And then lastly, so just like what I have said a while ago, since research is a cyclical uh, endeavor or it is cyclical, so after your conclusion, after the result of your research, there will be a problem that will arise. Okay, so what would be that that problem and what will you recommend to the future researcher to resolve that specific problem? Okay, so those are the seven steps of the research process. So next will be the research ethic. So when we say ethics, these are the guidelines that we must follow when we are conducting research. Okay, so it will educate and monitor us researchers to ensure that we are following a highly ethical standard. Okay, so research ethic promotes uh um it promotes expanding knowledge. Okay, it promotes the correct way to conduct research. So these are the following research ethics that we must follow or we must observe. First, we must have an informed consent. So meaning all of the people involved in our research must be informed that they will be part of our research. Okay, So you may write a letter of intent addressed to a certain group of people uh, to inform them in advance that they will be part of your research okay so you will not go directly to a specific group of people and then interview them or ask them to answer your questionnaires okay so first secure a letter okay inform them that they will be part of your research second honesty so all of the information that we will put in our research must be correct must be precise okay must be validated first Okay, and then there must be fair treatment with the information that we have gathered. Third is objectivity. So we researchers must not be biased. Okay, so like for example, when forming your questions, it must be neutral. Okay, your your questions must not be leading negatively or must not be negatively uh, must not be leading to the negative side of the topic or to the positive side of it. We must be neutral, okay? We must be fair. Um, we must, uh, there must be no biases when treating the information that we have gathered. Fourth is integrity. So if you promise to keep the information you have gathered private, you must live up to that promise. Okay, you must not broke your promises. Okay, so um, you must have this palabra de honor or in Filipino, you must have this isang salita. Okay, so you must live up to that promises. Next, carefulness. So you must be careful when conducting your research, when writing your research. Okay, so our... Research must be free from any errors um, in treating 
in analyzing the data, we must be careful. We must use a specific tools or the correct tools or appropriate tools in, analy in analyzing okay, so that we could come up with the correct result. Next is openness. So we researchers must be open from any criticisms. Okay, We must listen to the advices or the suggestions of other researchers when we are conducting research. Respect for intellectual property, so meaning whenever you are uh, borrowing information or when you are borrowing data coming from other researchers, we must give proper credit to them. Okay, we must give due credit to those writers who somehow dedicated their lives in studying a specific topic. Next is confidentiality. So it comes with integrity. So if <clears throat> the data that you have gathered are somehow private, you must keep it private. Okay, You must not tell anybody about the data that you have or about the information that you've known to assert uh, from a certain person. Okay, so the information that you have gathered must be kept private. It must not leak. Okay, so that's for confidentiality. Next is responsible mentoring. So since you will be working as a group, so you must be responsible in supporting and teaching your group mates. Okay, so if you are somehow advanced or you know some uh, something about the topic that you will be studying. So you somehow share the knowledge that you've known to your group mates. Uh, next will be responsible publication. So make sure that all of the information that you will publish, all of the information that you will put into your research uh, will be validated. The resources that you will use must be reliable and credible enough okay so you must check it first if the grammar is followed or is correct if the information that you have gathered is valid or updated next is res respect for colleagues so this will be applied uh, to your group mates okay so you must respect their opinions you must respect their point of views so if they want to talk you listen to them you will consider their suggestions if it will help your research next is social responsibility so it's like the importance of research that it will somehow raise uh, raise awareness to some social issues so we researchers have this social responsibility to resolve the problems that we are encountering in our society. Next is non-discrimination. Okay, so just like objectivity, we researchers must not be biased. So we will interview, we will somehow survey, or we will survey all types of people. Okay, we will not consider their race, their physical appearance, their gender and identity or gender expression when we will be having interviews or survey okay so um we will not be biased when it comes to gender age race ethnicity color and so on and so forth so if they will be the concerned people in our research may it um, we will interview them, we will survey them regardless of their uh, gender, age, and so on and so forth. Next is competence. So we researchers must show competence when conducting our research. Okay, So we must show that we knew this topic. Okay, We have gathered enough data about this topic since... We are dealing with this topic for a quite long time. Okay, Next is legality. So we must follow all of the laws, rules that govern our research. So like for example, 
we must not violate the Data Privacy Act and also the Copyright Act of the Philippines. Okay, so we must follow all of the rules and guidelines under those laws. Next is animal care. So this will be applicable if uh, the subject of your study is an animal. Okay, so all of the procedures that you need to follow must be applied. Also, if the subject of your research is a human being or our people, so we must also follow the human subject's protection. Okay, so just like uh, animal care, we must follow all the procedures that we must apply when we are conducting our research. So social responsibility is just repeated. Next is human rights. So just like in legality, we must observe and we must um, somehow uh, follow the basic human rights. Okay, so we must observe this uh, if they don't want to be interviewed we will not force them to be part of our research. Okay? That's why we must inform them ahead of time. Okay? If they don't want to tell their names, they, you, we will not force them to tell their names. Okay? Voluntary participation, just like what I've said a while ago, we will not force a certain person to be part of our research if they don't want to participate. Next is anonymity. So if they want to be uh, if they want to be kept anonymous, we will not tell their names. Okay, it comes with confidentiality and um integrity. And then lastly is privacy. So just like confidentiality, we will keep the information that we have gathered from our respondents private. Okay, we will not tell it to the other uh research groups or members of other research groups. So we will just keep it. Uh, within the members of your research group. Okay, so those are the research ethics that we must follow when we are conducting or observe when we are conducting our research. If we fail to do it, that will be research misconduct. Okay, so research misconduct includes fabrication, so meaning you are making information out of nowhere, okay, or you are changing information without proper procedures or without following proper procedures, falsification and plagiarism. So it does not include honest error of differences of opinion. So like, for example, if you will be interviewing people, so they may have different perspective or point of views about a specific topic. So that part is not included in research misconduct. Okay, so research misconduct can erode trust. Okay, so it may lessen the trust that we, uh, the trust from different group of people that might be the sponsor of your research. Since, for example, we researchers may not have that enough um, fund or money to support our research. So we will somehow look for sponsors. So if you will be, uh, if you will keep on um, doing wrong things like the research misconduct, that trust coming from these funding agencies will be lessened and it will be difficult for the future researchers to look for possible sponsors. Uh, that will grant them or help them to finish their research. So as much as possible, we must observe, we must do, we must follow research ethics. Okay? And then, next will be the intellectual property. So since we need to respect intellectual property, we must discuss the different intellectual properties. So it refers to the protection of creation of the mind which have bo both a moral and commercial value. So intellectual property is the umbrella term encompassing both copyright and industrial property such as trademarks, patents, and trade secrets. Okay, so 
we have the different types of intellectual property. The first one is the patent. Patent is a form of intellectual property that gives the owner the legal right to exclude others from making, using, selling, and importing an invention for a limited period of years. So like for example, um, you are the inventor of a specific product or a specific thing. So you own the patent of that thing. So if you don't want others to copy okay, or to use your product, you may exclude them. So they will not be part of the people who may use your product. Okay? So it may the right of that product exclusively belong to you. So that's the patent. Okay? So we may have patent could be classified into three. The first one is utility patent. So this kind of patent in here, the function of that product or the usage of that product belongs to you. Okay, the rights to the function and the utility of that product belongs to you. Next is design patent. So it covers the aesthetic design of your product. So um, the physical appearance must not be copied if you don't allow them to copy. Okay? And then lastly, plant patent. So it covers the rights to a specific discovered plant. Like for example, if you are a researcher who studies plants, so and then you discovered a specific species that is not discovered by others or that is not being studied by by others so you have you may have the patent to that specific plant if you discovered it okay, so that's patent next is copyright so copyright is an exclusive legal right given to an originator of or an assignee to print publish perform film or record literary artistic or musical material and to authorize others to do the same. So, copyright is an intellectual property that you may have. It covers written and even filmed materials. Okay? So, some of the copyrightable works are literary works, short stories, novels, poems, okay, or scripts of a certain drama or play, okay, musical works, tone, melody, um, the musical score, dramatic work, like for example, films, movies, plays, choreographic work, dance steps or moves, okay. pictorial, graphic, and sculptural work, are also copyrightable works. Like, for example, you have a certain sculpture and you don't want others to copy or make an exact replica of that. So, it may be covered by copyright. Audiovisual work, so um, music videos, um, film may also be under audiovisual. And then sound recordings is also or are also included, and then architectural work like for example building designs, um interior designs are also copyrightable works. So for example, you want to include these works on your research, you must give proper credit to the original author or the original sources of these materials okay so if you fail to do that you may be uh, you are violating the copyright act of a certain place like for example in the philippines we have the copyright act of the philippines so under it if you offended or if you violated it it you may be fined or you may be jailed next is trademark so, trademark is a recognizable name, insignia, phrase, word, or symbol that denotes a specific product and legally differenti differentiates it 
from all other products of its kind. So, trademark makes a specific company or a specific group different from other groups. Okay? So, this is your, kumbaga, in Filipino, pagkakakilanlan. From it, you will be easily recognized by others. So, trademarks may be... Uh, we have different kinds of tra trademarks or different types of trademarks. First is generic trademarks. Um, among the, the types of trademarks, this is the weakest. Okay? It can be copied by others. So, generic trademarks includes phrases like, for example, for B uh, BDO, their phrase, we find ways, is an example of a generic trademark. For Jollibee, their Phrase, Bida Ang Saya, is an example of a generic trademark. Next is descriptive trademarks. So from the word describe, it describes the product. Okay, so like for example, cold and creamy for an ice cream. Okay, so it directly describes the product. So that's for descriptive trademarks. For suggestive trademarks, it somehow describes the product, but indirectly or in an indirect manner. So like, for example, Jaguar is an example of a suggestive trademark. So Jaguar is a brand or a company of an automotive or vehicles. So if you will be somehow relating it to their business, it has somehow a a relation to their product. So since they are dealing with vehicles, if you will be looking at a Jaguar, it is fast. Okay? It moves quickly. So if you will be putting that characteristic of a Jaguar to their product, you'll see the relationship between the two. Okay? So that's suggestive trademark. It indirectly describes the product. Unlike in descriptive trademark, you will already see the description, the characteristic of the product to their tagline or even on their, uh, even on the name of their um, product or their company. And then fanciful trademarks. So fanciful trademarks are words uh, that do not belong or that you cannot see in a dictionary. So, in the context of language, they do not have meaning. But since they were used in a specific business, they already have a meaning. Okay, like for example, Adidas. It doesn't have a meaning on the an, on an English dictionary. But since it is being used in the business industry, if you will be looking uh, for the meaning of it in the internet, there will be a meaning since it is being used. Okay? So Adidas, um, Caltex. So those are examples of fanciful trademarks. It is quite strong compared to uh, generic trademarks since it could not be cop copied that easily. Okay? So that's fanciful trademark. And then lastly, we have arbitrary trademarks. So when we say arbitrary trademarks, these are common concepts, okay, words or ideas that are known to many. So, ibig sabihin in Filipino, alam nating lahat. But when it is being used in the business industry or when this concept is being used to, is being used, medyo lumayo yung meaning niya doon sa kanyang totoong kahulugan. Like, for example, apple. Okay? So, if you will be relating the apple, the physical apple, the real apple, to the product that is wherein it is being used, like the technological devices, medyo malayo yung connection between the two. Okay? So, that's arbitrary trademark. So, a common thing is being used differently. Okay? So, those are examples of trademarks.
Okay, and then the last type of intellectual property is trade secret. So trade secret is a type of intellectual property in the form of a formula, practice, process, design, instrument, pattern, commercial method, or compilation of information that is not generally known or reasonably ascertainable ascertainable by others and by which a person or company can obtain an economic advantage over competitors. Example po ng trade secrets are recipes. So for example, sa Jollibee or sa KFC, di ba? they are not telling the exact spices that they are using on their chicken breading. Okay? So that's an example of a trade secret. So only this group of people knew what is being included on their product. Okay, so like for example, for Jollibee, the process that they are doing when frying their chicken, bakit sobrang lutong, bakit sobrang juicy nung kanilang manok. So that's an example of a trade secret. Okay, so... These are information that are known to many. Okay, so that's trade secret. Okay, so next is copyright infringement. So if we failed to follow the guidelines stated in the Copyright Act of a certain place, we are doing or we are violating the copyright act so it is being called copyright infringement okay so copyright infringement is the use or the production of copyright pro protected materials without permission of the copyright holder so it means that the that the rights accorded to the copyright holder such as the exclusive use of a work for a set period of time are breached by a third party. Ito yung madalas nating nakukomit. Okay? So, here are examples of copyright infringement. First, if you are downloading movies or music without proper payment for use, that's copyright infringement. You are downloading videos from YouTube. You are downloading videos from different sites. Ayan. Cop copyright infringement po yun. Second, if you are recording movies in theater, ayan, alam na alam po natin yan lahat. Okay? So, that's copyright infringement. If you are using others' photograph or a blog without permission, so like for example, um, you are, you will be having a report and then you get information or you've got pictures from Google and then you put it into your presentation. Oh, that's copyright infringement. Seeing software code without giving proper credit. So this is somehow IT related. <clears throat> and then creating videos with unlicensed music clips. Okay, so nowadays it is being monitored or strictly monitored by the different social media platforms. Okay, so if that is the case, still it is considered copyright infringement. So, in some cases, you will experience that the music that you have put into your videos are being uh, muted because you have violated the copyright. Okay? So, those are the parts which we were not able to finish during our last meeting. So, I hope that you... Uh, learn something from this video. So if you have questions, you may raise it on your, our GC. So that's all. Thank you for listening. See you on our next meeting. Goodbye.